In 1989, Nintendo released the Game Boy, a portable system that used interchangeable cartridges. The screen on the system is an LCD made up of 160 by 144 pixels. It could be difficult to see depending on the ambient lighting around you, and this led to a slew of accessories to improve your experience. In the years that followed, various revisions were made available, such as the Game Boy Pocket, the Game Boy Light in Japan, and eventually the Game Boy Color. If you preferred to game on a television, the Super Nintendo saw the release of the Super Game Boy in the mid-90s, allowing you to output the video to a TV screen and use your gamepad as the controller. Since the release of the Super Game Boy, many more ways to play Game Boy games have been made available. However, my focus for this video is to talk about the aesthetic of the screen used in the brick units, more specifically, that green color. First, let's take a look at the Super Game Boy in action. A few notes. The footage here is taken from a Super Nintendo outputting RGB to a PVM. This is an unmodified Super Game Boy, so it runs a bit faster than an actual Game Boy. And of course, the aspect ratio is horizontally stretched versus the real Game Boy counterpart. For the details as to why, you can watch the Super Nintendo aspect ratio video on this channel. Now the most obvious question to ask at the time of this cartridge's release is, what is it going to look like on the TV? We are moving from a monochromatic display with four shades of green to a color television. For the Super Game Boy, Nintendo provided the ability to select from various sets of four colors. Palettes for several games are selected automatically. Metroid 2, for example, selects a set of four that gives Samus a red helmet and a yellow suit. There are a few games that look relatively good if they have a palette ready to go, and there are also games that provide custom border art, a really neat feature in my opinion. Of course, the beauty from a given aesthetic is found in the eye of the beholder. I would like to see what some of these games would look like in pure green. Now, there are some options in the palette selection screen that give us a green combination. Whether or not we have an adequate number of palette options for any given game, I cannot say. What I would like to do is see what Super Game Boy looks like if we limit the image to only the green gun in the PVM. Maybe it will look Game Boy-like, but then maybe not. I'll share my thoughts and welcome yours. Obviously, you'll have to base your take off a CRT screen recorded with a camera and then recompressed after upload. That can potentially obfuscate things a bit. First of all, I would like to explain what I'm going to do. It might seem like the easiest solution would be to pull the red and blue BNC connectors off the back of the set to get green only. Yes, that would leave us with a green signal, however, the brightness for the picture comes from a combination of red, green, and blue. So, we aren't just removing two colors, we are also removing the brightness that comes from red and blue, regardless of the resulting color. I want to pull the Luma signal from something like Component Y Prime PBPR video, aka Component Video, or S Video. I don't own a component cable for the SNES, which would be a simple matter of pulling the red and blue plugs, as mentioned earlier. So, I will just pluck Luma from a SNES S Video cable using this homemade adapter that was totally made using parts that I just had around my workbench. Okay, one last thing. Even though the ports on the back of the PVM are shared between RGB and component video, it expects 0.7 volts peak to peak for green. If you attempt this on your own, do so knowing what you are feeding your display and what your display can take. Okay, enough tech. Let's go. The very first game I wanted to see was Tetris. Tetris is available on many platforms. Would you play it using Super Game Boy versus some other more modern method? I can't say. However, maybe the green Game Boy look works for you. I would say that this example looks pretty nice. It actually reminds me a bit of how I first experienced Tetris. You'll note that I turned the border off and zoomed in a bit for the green footage. It may not be a replica of the Game Boy screen, as you can see that the actual Game Boy has gaps between the pixels in the matrix display. However, it does provide an authentic all-green experience on a CRT. As this is our first game, I will toggle from RGB to component video. You can see that Luma is present without the color difference signal, so we get a black and white image. There is nothing to prevent you from playing the games this way as well, although I want to say there is also a monochromatic palette in the Super Game Boy that accomplishes the same thing. Next up is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Fall of the Foot Clan. I am not sure about this default palette with that shade of amber. This one has a pretty good look to it with minimal colors in my opinion. I tried one palette with a hint of green, and another monochrome white palette. Not bad. Now let's check it out in green because turtles and because Game Boy. 
I should point out that despite the fact the picture is green, don't forget that you can still change the palette, essentially altering the strength of the monochromatic green you are viewing. So how about this one? You feeling it? Playing a TMNT Game Boy game with a green screen is kind of fun. I imagine it would look good with the other Turtles games too, I just don't have them. Let's move on to Mario. The first Mario game has pretty simple graphics. The difference between this and six golden coins is pretty noticeable. As for the palette, you know, you put red overalls on Mario and I dig it. The rest of the colors are rather lacking, of course. The pyramids are empty as they have the same shade as most of the sky. Not much you can do there. The green flavor here isn't too bad. We have the dark blocks and the light green upper sky and ground. I wonder if the smaller size of the graphics with the Luma green is going to feel overwhelming. Let's find out. You know, since the graphic details of this game are rather simple, I think it looks best with a monochrome palette. Whether or not you want all green, well, let me know. This actually reminds me a lot of what it was like to play the game for the first time, except without the motion blur from the Game Boy screen. Hopefully, nostalgia isn't clouding my objectivity when it comes to liking an all-green CRT screen. Mario Land 2 has this rather muted palette by default. There is a green option, of course. And now the all-green version. I left the border on when I captured this footage, so it might be a little too much green. I'll mask it out. What are your thoughts on Mario Land 2? A Mario game with monochrome green, but greater details in the graphics. Speaking of detail, Parodius has a lot. I'm wondering if this one is going to feel a bit overwhelming in green. The default shade selected from the Super Game Boy is this amber color. I don't really know what I think of that. One advantage to staying in RGB is the ability to have a white background. Here is the RGB green flavor. And let's check out the all green Parodius. You know, I kind of like it. Truthfully, I think the details of Parodius lend themselves to any of the palette options we just saw. The lightly dusted backgrounds and the bold dark foregrounds work quite well. So maybe you can't go wrong with these three options. Parodius might be a game that doesn't really have a good multicolor palette option. It is mostly about the shading. So where does an all green CRT screen fit into the Game Boy equation? The Super Game Boy gives you colorful background artwork along with a fair number of selections for a palette. What is the breakdown? Is it going to be worth it for all games? Just a few. None at all. Is monochrome gaming on a CRT too niche? Is it something you watch in a video like this one, say, neat, and then move on? Let me know. Thanks for watching.